Thank you for inviting me here today. Thank you for your trust and thank you for your care. My father and my uncle were both Methodist ministers and both participated in my ordination about 14 years ago. So I gather their spirits with me today in this space. Will you join me now in a moment of prayer? Loving spirit of transformation, connection, and community, we give thanks for the ability to gather together in praise, to gather together in remembrance, to name the power of hard lives well lived, and to reflect on the many ways you call us together as one body. We give thanks for the roof over our head in this beautiful place of peace in the midst of so much conflict, this safe space in a weary world in need of healing. And we give thanks for all of the wounded healers who walk through these halls, past, present, and future. Help us to seek and find your face in others. And grant us an awareness of your presence here with us this morning, moving in us, around us, and through us. In your many holy names we pray. Amen. Amen. Have you ever wished that you could have a time machine and you could go back in time and have a do-over to take better advantage of the opportunities presented to you in the past? Opportunities that you have only become aware of with the gift of perspective. Or perhaps to travel forward into the future to gain a more meaningful perspective on your present life a better understanding of what's really important now. The matters that really matter now in the midst of so many distractions so that you might have a better opportunity to take full advantage and to transform the very precious moment in which you live. The passage of scripture today has always been such for me. Less about a judgment in the future and more about a window onto my present. What I can change while I can change it. A reminder to me of the interconnectedness of humanity and the role that each one of us must fill if we are ever to hope of making this world a better place. A better place in which we may all live together. If we are ever to hope to realize the dominion of Christ on earth, Christ alive in our hearts, our feet, our hands. It is a window on the present where faith transcends thought. When spirit moves within and love, love requires an action. Love requires a do. We must do something. We must care and we must take care. Now the convergence of your celebration of the reign of Christ the sovereign and your recognition of the transgender day of remembrance is very timely and fitting. Day of Remembrance services themselves are often very complex events with many speakers sometimes skewing toward the political and social arenas. However, ultimately, the Day of Remembrance service is to remember and honor our siblings who have lost their lives, who were murdered while living their lives authentically, true to themselves, in remembrance of those whose lives were taken from them due to fear, hate, and transphobic violence. It's also a time to challenge us and cause us to reflect on our own role in the creation of such a world where such hate, anger, and fear are even possible. A time to examine the poorly illuminated places within our own hearts for the seeds and origins of such things that may exist within us. The Day of Remembrance also challenges those of us with a voice and with privilege to remember those who have neither. The overwhelming majority of victims this year and of every single year that I can remember do not look like me, but are almost always inner city trans women of color those who survive on the edges of the margins. Now, if we accept the supposition that we as people of faith profess that we are all made in the image of God, of divinity, and that God created male and female in God's own image, then the creator does indeed transcend gender. 
And we are indeed made in the image of divinity, male and female. And all of the wonderful spaces in between and around about. Now someone once asked me why I thought God made transgender, gender queer, and non-gender binary people. And I responded perhaps to provide a clearer image of divinity. A clear image of God. Just as science is constantly broadening the horizons, for me, the trans communities push at the edges and offer another glimpse into the very expansive nature of our Creator and of the universe that the Creator created. In my view of the world, I truly experience a Creator who is both male and female, similar to both, but unlike either. One who has many names, but who ultimately identifies simply as I am. I exist. My God is totally transgender. <laughs> Transcending gender. Gender non-binary. For goodness sake, my God is the God of swirling galaxies and a million stars. The breadth of my God reaches from the infinite to the minute. And one is not more important or precious than the other. Altogether, they form the harmony and the very balance of the universe. But all too often, we as humans are driven by a centrality of perspective and purpose, like a selfish and demanding child, all too often. And without any care and concern for our siblings, we find ourselves driven. We seek out religion. And the one who made us solely for our own comfort. Yet to truly experience something of our creator, perhaps we need look no farther than at the creation that surrounds us. All around us, around and about us, everything belongs. Like a child seeking to gaze into the eyes of the one that made them. Failing to do that, we might be better advised to look around to seek out our siblings' eyes and our siblings' faces. For it is in these places that I believe we can begin to touch the mystery that reaches to the ends of the universe. It is among ourselves that we can come together to see a clearer image of the one who made us all. The scripture passage today speaks of the least of these. And while I understand the meaning, I'm not especially fond of that phrase. I prefer the other. That covers a lot of ground. Those who are other from us, those who are strangers, for it is those who are most different from us, most strange to us, who grant us the perspective necessary to discover the God who is wholly other. To enlarge our own world and in doing so allow us to see ourselves more clearly. I also feel that Jesus is talking here about the connectivity of humanity through himself. These precious children of God that we remember today who lost their life while living their lives authentically true to themselves, need to be remembered. Their faces need to challenge us and remind us each year, each year calling out to us to make next year less dangerous for the most vulnerable among us. In doing so, we not only make a difference in the lives of others, but we make a difference in our own lives. Serving the needs of others changes us, transforms us in some very profound ways, especially when we are able to give the other and ourselves the gift and the challenge of friendship. When we reach out to the other, to those who are different from us, we are indeed reaching out to divinity, reaching out to God. Jesus was telling us that the divine presence exists in all of us, has a home in all of us. 
We are indeed the temples for the indwelling of the divine. And when we extend ourselves to the other, to the stranger, it is indeed not without risk or discomfort. And yet our world becomes just a little bit larger and we are given a greater glimpse of the God of all. A wise soul once said, in order to see much, one must look away from one's self. Do you care for the other? Do you care for my people? And if you do, how will you care? And if not, then how on earth do you hope to bring about the reign of Christ? We are, all of us, brightly and colorfully woven into the fabric of humanity. We must care for each other. We must protect each other. We who are trans and our allies span generations, classes, cultures, races, religions, sexualities, and identities. At every known intersection and division, we exist. We and our allies are there holding hands across the barriers, the barriers that threaten to divide our world. We who are alive must stand for the dead. And we who have voice must speak for the voiceless. And we who have some small measure of power and privilege, no matter how small it is, must use what we have to give heart and lift up to those who have none. And I believe that by working together, one by one, as one we will one day, reach that place on the horizon that we all journey toward. That is what I hope, that is what I believe, that is what I dream. Please help me make it so. <laughs>